Hello everybody, my name's Terry, I'm the board modeler, and this is a 10 minute tutorial where I will hopefully show you how to use hairspray to simulate chipped and damaged paint on your models, like this one. So, how about we get started? Before we start the tutorial proper, let me explain how this process works with this cross section of a model's paint coat. As you can see, the paintwork on a model has several layers. The plastic part is obviously on the bottom, followed by a layer of primer, which smooths out any imperfections and helps the colour coat stick down. The colour coat goes on top of the primer, and a clear coat goes on top of the dry colour coat. This gives the model a uniform finish, and protects the colour coat from damage during handling. When we're doing the hairspray chipping technique, we add a couple more layers to this. First, we add a base coat. Based on your references, the base coat could be metallic, rust coloured, or the colour of the factory undercoating on the machine you're modelling. Whatever colour you choose, just make sure it's not a water-based paint, and preferably something like a lacquer or an enamel, as it has to withstand some fairly rough handling. The next layer we add is the hairspray itself. This goes between the base coat and the colour coat, and allows us to chip off areas of colour to reveal the base coat underneath. And as for the chipping, just add water. The water will soak through the acrylic colour coat and dissolve the hairspray underneath it. In the areas where the hairspray is dissolved, the colour coat will crack and flake off the model, creating chips of colour where the base coat shows through. So that's how paint chipping with hairspray works. Let's see how we do it then. The key ingredient in this weathering method is, of course, hairspray. You don't need to use a particularly expensive variety. In fact, I've found that the cheap, generic hairspray tends to dissolve more readily and give better results. Apart from the hairspray, you'll also need paint. Use acrylic for the top coat, as this will soak up the water and allow the hairspray to dissolve, and use lacquer or enamel paints for the base coat as we want this to be protected from the water. Applying the paint and hairspray to the model in thin layers is crucial for this technique to work, so this will require an airbrush. In order to wet the hairspray after you've finished applying the paint, we'll need an old paintbrush, one with fairly short bristles. And finally, it's a good idea to have an empty paint bottle or a small jar, so that we can decant the hairspray out of the can and spray it through our airbrush. So, now that we know how the technique works, and what we need to actually make it work, let's talk about how to simulate chipped paint with hairspray. We'll start off by decanting our hairspray out of the can and into a jar. This is so we can spray it out of our airbrush onto the model later on. If you wanted to, you could spray the hairspray directly onto the model from the can but using an airbrush allows for greater control and helps to keep the hairspray layer a bit thinner. To decant the hairspray, I attach a drinking straw to the nozzle on top of the can and then simply spray it into the jar. After you've finished decanting the hairspray, you'll notice a couple of things. First, you might notice that the side of the jar is really cold to the touch. In addition, the hairspray is covered in bubbles. That's because the propellants in the can are depressurising and boiling off. In order to let these propellants escape properly, leave the lid off until the hairspray reaches room temperature. And I mean it. For safety's sake, do not put the lid back on the jar until the contents are fully depressurised. You really don't want to risk an explosion by sealing in those expanding gases. So, while we're waiting for the hairspray to depressurise, Let's get on with painting the model then, shall we? This bit's fairly typical of most airbrushed paint finishes. Start by priming the model, and then, after you've got a nice even layer of primer with no imperfections, and you've left it to dry of course, apply the base coat. This is the bare metal, rust or undercoat colour that's going to be visible in the chipped and damaged paint areas. For this particular model, Hasegawa's P1Y Ginga that I'm building for a review, 
I chose to go with Tamiya's Gloss Aluminium Lacquer Paint. You can use pretty much any colour you want though, provided that it won't wash off or soak up any water, and provided you let it dry completely. Leave the model overnight to make sure the base coat's fully cured, and, once it is, you're ready to add the layer of hairspray. Applying the hairspray layer is fairly simple. The liquid hairspray is so thin that you don't need to dilute it or add any additional thinners to spray it out of your airbrush. I typically keep the pressure around 35 psi at the compressor and use short, fast strokes to apply the hairspray to the model in thin layers. Two or three of these layers should be sufficient to ensure that the model's surface, or at least the bits where you want chipped paint, are evenly covered with hairspray. Once you've achieved that, give the hairspray about 10 to 15 minutes to start drying before you apply the top colour coat. Any excess hairspray in your airbrush can simply be washed out with water. After about 10 to 15 minutes, the hairspray should be dry enough for you to apply your top colour coat. For this model, I'm using Tamiya's XF11 JN Green. Unlike the base coat and primer, we want this top colour coat to absorb water and allow the hairspray underneath it to dissolve. For that reason, this top coat should be a water-based acrylic paint. When applying the top colour coat, follow a similar process as we did with the hairspray and keep each layer nice and thin. We don't want the hairspray to dissolve before we've finished painting, so keep your paint coats light and allow each layer a little time to set before moving on to the next one. This helps to minimise the chance of the paint building up in one particular area, which could lead to cracks and blemishes in the paintwork of your final product. Anyway, once you've got about three or four layers of colour on the model, leave it aside for about half an hour to start drying. Half an hour later, and now we're at the fun part. The paint's dry enough to handle, but still porous enough to soak up water. So we'll get an old paintbrush and start applying water to the areas where we want the paint to be chipped and damaged. Typically, these areas will be around doorways, access panels, and the leading edges of wings and tail surfaces, where objects might scratch against or fly into the paint on a real vehicle. Take a look at reference images online or in books to get some idea of how the paintwork on the vehicle you're modeling might get worn and damaged in actual service. Anyway, that's probably enough about how to research paintwork, let's talk about how to chip and damage it. And it's really simple. Apply water to the area you want to chip, wait a few seconds for the paintwork to start cracking and blistering, and then, using your brush or a toothpick, rub away at the top coat to flake off the paint and reveal the base coat underneath. Once you've got a result you're happy with, leave the model to dry overnight so the top coat has time to fully harden, and then apply a clear coat to protect your finish. On this model, I'm using a clear lacquer, because I still have some decals to apply, and I don't want to risk getting the hairspray wet and removing the entire top colour coat as I'm doing so. Anyway, once you've sprayed on your clear coat and given it time to dry, that's all there really is to it. Paint chipping with hairspray is a simple yet effective way of replicating old weathered paint on your models. And it goes a long way towards improving the realism of aircraft and armour kits, and helping create an interesting backstory for fantasy, sci-fi, or wargaming models and miniatures. As for this tutorial though, we're all done. And there's just over a minute to spare from my 10 minute goal too. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learnt something along the way. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feedback or anything you'd like to add, leave a comment down below. Anyway, my name's Terry, I've been the Board Modeler, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe, and happy building.